Hello guys, my name is Dmitry Mrzenski and in today's video we will learn how to decrease the bundle size of your Angular application by removing of unused Angular material CSS styles. Well, removing of that code from CSS it's quite hard to implement due to its dynamic nature. However, we will decrease our CSS file size almost four times without any harm for your Angular application. Stay here, we are getting started. Okay, first of all, let's do the production build of our application in our current state and let's investigate what we have inside our generated styles CSS file. We can see that this um, CSS file contains also mat table classes or I can also see autocomplete which we are not using at all and our file size now is 129 kilobytes. So how we can get rid of this CSS which we are not using? To have better understanding let's um, learn some theory but if you want to jump directly into the code and uh, I mean implementation uh, there is some time code in video description. Okay let's have a look on this slide so what we include in our styles scss file well there is uh, such mix scenes as angular material theme which includes also mat theme core uh, mixing and mat autocomplete theme, mat card theme, and uh, it includes uh, all uh, mixings for every component which is provided by Angular Material Library. And also we have a mat core mixing, which includes also some global styles like mat ripple, overlays, text fields, whatever. And also you can see that uh, it includes Angular Material Typography mixing and this Angular Material Typography also includes um, typography for every possible component in Angular Material. So as you can see these two mixings uh, are including styles for all material components despite we use them or not. Uh, but we want to have something like uh, this, right? Okay, uh, let's then do this. Um, so let's go to our underscore theme scss file and find our angular material theme and we can see that the only thing which does this mixin it is including all other mixins and that's it. So nothing stops us to include um, required mixins manually, right? So let's do this right now. So go to styles as CSS and I want to remove our Angular Material theme and instead I will include styles only for components I am using and some and some also common styles. Um, well, let's um, go to our app and have a look what do we have there and what we want to include actually. So we have here card component, uh, then select form field, also toolbar and, and we have this slide toggle. Okay, let's include them. Uh, now um, check if it still works as expected. Okay, yes it is. Great, now uh, let's build our application one more time and check if the file size has been changed. Okay, not bad, 38.9 kilobytes. It is 3, 3.5 times smaller. Good result, but can we achieve more? And um, yeah, let's have a look. And in our previous slide, Let's go to this previous slide and we can see that our mat core includes Angular Material Typography which um, also includes typography for all components eagerly. So they are always there despite 
we want or not. Um, so let's customize it. I will copy all other mix scenes which are common except typography and replace our mat core with it then I will include only necessary typography styles somewhere below our custom theme. By the way, here's mistake and do not put uh, component typography uh, styles into your custom theme, uh, but uh, you have to put it somewhere outside. The reason is that custom theme is being included two times for dark and light theme. So the typography will be duplicated twice. So typography is the same for every theme. Well, uh, now let's build one more time and could we can see that style CSS became four kilobytes smaller not so much, but still. Well, the one small remark about this typography config, it is actually completely up to you to do this last step. If it's really super crucial for your application and every single kilobyte counts, do it. Otherwise, these four kilobytes will not show you some significant boost. The one disadvantage it has, it's... Um, Actually, if you update to another major uh, version of Angular Material, it may happen that Angular Material team has removed or added some, I don't know, new global styles or uh, changed the naming or something like that. In this case, you just have to check one more time if everything fine and only after this you can do update. Otherwise, you have to adjust. But as I said before, it uh, depends on, that's up to you and depends on your application and your requirements. Let's do now final check and uh, let's go to our application in the browser and let's check if it looks the same and it looks the same, very good. And let's check our theme switcher. And yeah, the one problem with this text for dark theme, it stays dark, it should be white. So let's fix it immediately. Uh, let's go to app component uh, SCSS theme file and add to our um, component theme the variable foreground and I want to get from theme foreground uh, color map and I want to add h1 and say that I want to have color for this h1 as a matte color foreground text. Do you remember by the way where we take this text? It is actually in theme SCSS and there is the color map called foreground and we are taking this from here. And you can learn more about the colors from my previous video. The link to this you will see somewhere up. Okay, that was it for today. I hope you learned something new about Angular Material theming. And I have to say that it's gonna be the last video about this topic because in the future I want to focus more on Angular Material CDK, which is really super powerful and allows us to develop really complex components and extend already existing ones uh, like uh, Material Table or Material Stepper and so on. So if you're interested in it, subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what would you like to know exactly about Angular Material CDK. And as always, thank you for your attention and see you in the future.